Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Rebecca Selby, and thanks for joining us on the second um, of the five series of webinars we're going to be doing on um, backup as a service. Today we have Mike Mitch from NEC, and we are going to be talking about the competitive landscape um, within the backup world. If you do have any questions um, following the webinar, um, feel free to contact your account manager. They're listed out there. Um, and obviously you can go back and reference their email and their phone number if you need to. And then if you're not sure who to contact, just simply email info at optiseek.com and that, that will go directly to my team and we can point you in the right direction. Um, so thank you, Mike, for um, joining us today and um, let's talk about competitive landscape. Rebecca, thanks so much for inviting us um, to provide the second part of our um, uh, five part mini series on NEC Backup Recover. Uh, my name is Mike Mitch and I'm the uh, sales director for NEC Univerge Blue Sales Strategy. So today, what we're going to be doing is, um, as Rebecca mentioned, covering the competitive landscape. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about three different types of engagement categories that you will run into. Um, we're going to then go ahead and look at who are the primary competitors in those engagement opportunities um, because they could change based off of the type of customer and the, um, the model that's in place. And then last but not least, what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap it up with um, some high level positioning and our battle card that's designed to combat the competitors and help you on your approach, depending on the different type of engagement category that you run into. So let's look at the three types of different engagements because they are different based off of the type of customer, the way they're organized and the complexity. The first one we're gonna talk about um, that we run into is internal IT staff that could be a friend and are open to the discussion or a foe in that they're trying to protect their own ground from that standpoint. Um, and providing a managed service could be viewed as complimentary or it could be viewed as being competitive to the internal IT staff. So it's really important to get a good understanding of what that IT staff is doing and do they fall into one of those two categories. Uh, as I mentioned, some of them may welcome the support um, or they're going to try to protect their ground. In, the, in either scenario, they're purchasing their own hardware um, and their own backup software. And typically, it's because of the larger organizations, they're considering cloud, but it's a lower adoption. So it is something that they're looking at. I the, uh, typically, the, the CFO or the CIO is saying, hey, we got a cloud first strategy. They want to be going in that direction, but they haven't typically done it in these areas, which is kind of presents an opportunity for us, as you'll see in the next couple of slides. The second one are the appliance vendors. The appliance vendors are really focused on small to mid-sized organizations. Um, in these types of scenarios, the IT team involvement is lower uh, because they don't have, they, they're doing more and they're using the appliance vendors to try to get some level of support along these lines. The appliance vendors are also packaging basic cloud uh, services as an option in these environments. And last but not least are the managed services. Typically, these are competitors that we'll run into that are focused on larger organizations. Firms like IBM or Oracle with the professional services. The implementations, while they're custom to the organization, the complexity to the customer is very simple. So it's kind of interesting when you look at this chart that um, IT organizations, if they're doing it themselves, regardless, regardless if they're a friend or foe for larger organizations, they got a lot of complexity, <laughs> which is an opportunity to complement the sales strategy when you're going in with an NEC backup recovery solution. Um, because again, you're offloading, right? The hardware purchase, the software, all the other ones, the appliance vendors, a little bit of a different strategy, um, bringing in cloud as a part of it. Also um, helping the um, IT team to get a higher level of support without the cost. And on the managed service area, typically with larger organizations, 
Custom implementations, very costly. We can bring that level in at a much lower price point um, in your engagement. So try to frame the type of engagement that you have with the customers of one of these three areas. Now let's type about, let's talk about again in those types of competitors with the internal IT, right? So they're using their own IT staff to perform the backups as their own internal managed service. Um, they typically have dedicated staff that only perform backups. This is very much so true in the healthcare space that we see. There's people that are dedicated that only do the backup piece. A lot of them get stretched. They're taking other phone calls. They're doing other things. So typically what we're finding is, finding is that sometimes while they want to be dedicated, their um, IT staff are also performing other functions, which is an entry point for us in that area to offload it. Second thing is they're utilizing leading backup software. They're not typically going out and they're not um, you know, downloading freeware for backup software. They're using state-of-the-art, right? The industry-leading backup software. We'll talk about that in just a minute. And they're typically purchasing um, the on-prem storage and they're replicating or they're trying to replicate it to a second site. Depends on the size of the organization. We've run into a lot of scenarios, especially with mid-sized hospitals where they will have their on-prem storage and they're replicating to another hospital, but there's no disaster recovery at the second hospital, and it's not disconnected. The security policies aren't in place for that. So there's some real challenges even with the internal IT because you don't want to say that they're not doing it correctly, but through a site audit, you want to come in and say, hey, can we help you to look to see at no uh, obligation what your security settings are in, in these areas. Typically, NEC Hydro Store customers fit into this category. We see this happening at quite a bit with some of the large accounts, um, and also some of the smaller ones that are not using it all the way. And then last but not least, a lot of them are considering cloud and some are trying to test public clouds in this area to get off site. Vulnerabilities, as I kind of um, recap previous um, cost, right? Their staff cost, the cost of the software, the infrastructure to run it, the training, the cost to troubleshoot when something happens and to keep the systems updated are all costs that are vulnerabilities and entry points for you to go in on. Security is also another one where you not only have the architecture, did they architect the second site to be correct, where it's secure, and do they have people that they're doing um, proper policies on to ensure they don't have access to the data that could create an internal threat. So you got security pieces um, that you can also go into on an internal IT organization and say, hey, you really need to have a third party doing this to make sure that you've got that separated. And last but not least are the service levels. You know, um, is there enough redundant staff? If one of the people is out, are they able to still operate? Can they do a disaster recovery failover, right, from that standpoint? And are they getting proactive reports out of these areas? So it's ironic, but internal IT staff turns into be one of um, the competitors that you run into when you're going out and you're selling backup as a service. And it's important to navigate through that. Now, if you look at the different types of backup software that's out there, the industry leading software um, are from firms called Commvault, Hewlett Packard, IBM, Veeam, Veritas. They are the industry leaders in these areas from that standpoint. And then, um, however, they are not the only ones because there is a lot of other software out there. There's over 50 types of backup software that you can get either as freeware over the web or that you can, um, uh, that you subscribe to in, in smaller areas. But typically with the internal organizations, they're gonna lead themselves across one of these top level backup software products from that standpoint. Now let's look at the types of competitors as appliances. They have their own IT staff, they're overworked, they're typically missing SLAs, um, and also the customers are not pleased with what they're offering from that standpoint. So if we go forward on this here, they typically have a on-prem hardware appliance, some have a very large hardware appliance as a side note. Uh, they typically in, uh, include some form of off-prem storage uh, typically, it's a fixed amount of storage. It's not a variable amount of storage. It also requires IT staff to monitor the backup job. Uh, in other words, it's not a managed service from that standpoint. Uh, and there's a lot of vulnerabilities from the cost of the appliance to the completeness associated with the appliance. There's a lot of issues that can be associated in that manual process because it's not automated. 
There's also security challenges, as I mentioned, both at the architecture and the internal threat level. Um, other opportunities to go in on the vulnerabilities include reporting and the updates. Again, we're doing that on a proactive basis. A lot of these appliances, actually the, the vast majority of it, they don't do that. They're not doing the reports. They're not doing it because they're providing an appliance piece as opposed to that managed service. Uh, you still have the training and the troubleshooting costs that are associated with it. And you know, can you get the appliance vendor on the phone to help you? Um, and last but not least, it's really not a part of a suite of services like we do with Univerge Blue from that standpoint. So a lot of these compliance appliance vendors um, are out there and the only thing that they're doing is providing just the appliance, not the managed service along those lines. So let's look at the types of appliances that are out there. The ones that you're going to run into the vast majority of the time are firms uh, like Barracuda, Datto, Cohicity, Evolt, Quantum, and Unitrends. These are the ones that we typically run into the vast majority of the time. And at a high level, just to make sure that everyone understands, we always lead that we're providing a fully managed service against any of these appliance vendors. There's a perception in the industry that the appliance vendors are going ahead and pro taking proactive action if something doesn't complete, if a job doesn't complete. That doesn't happen. They, you get an alert, it's up to the customer who bought the appliance to go ahead and fix it. They're not taking that proactive action. With the NEC solution, we're taking that proactive action. Typically with the Barracuda solution, there's a high upfront cost that's associated with it. Um, a data solution, it's a medium expense, but it requires a uh, significant ex um, uh, investment in the front. On the NEC solution, low to high, right? We have a lot of variables and we also can let them try the solution without a cost to start up so they can get a feel for it and see what it's going to be. On the disaster recovery side, typically with the Barracuda and the Datto, uh, the dealer's got to provide it, right? Um, and in the Datto scenario, it's not a complete DR solution from that standpoint. A lot of our channel partners um, that are Datto have tried our DR. They like the, what I'd consider to be the white glove support that they get from NEC. And um, the ability that you don't have to pay for it until it's actually operating. Um, and we will offer the high level service level agreement so that we can do real time um, replication to meet very, very short failover times, especially in this new time that we're living in, um, the COVID scenario, being remote and having high availability because everyone's online is really important. So being able to deliver that high level SLA is also another key benefit that you can drive with the NEC solution. And last but not least in these scenarios against Barracuda Datto is the Office 365 piece, right? Very limited, um, where we offer a complete backup solution. So it's also backing up uh, completely, not just the, um, uh, the servers and all the applications um, and the databases. It's also backing up completely the client so we can restore them. Now, we also get questioned a lot of times about a firm called Carbonite. Um, Carbonite, again, is not a managed service. Um, if it's, you know, you get the alerts up to the customer to take action from that standpoint, they're not going to do it. It is very low cost. Um, there is no disaster recovery that's associated with it. And there is no really Office 365 capability that's associated with it from that standpoint. So um, all around the, you know, the level of driving a fully managed service that NEC has, offering a range of pricing from very low in some testing up to very high end with very high level SLAs and complete backup for the entire landscape. Okay, now let's look at the third level, which is the managed service providers. Typically, these guys are um, targeting very large accounts. Um, some of them, uh, they have some form of a backup service. Uh, their strategy is to get the customer to move off-prem. And we run up against firms like Milestone Technologies and firms also like New Cloud Networks. Um, that go ahead and they want to sell the backup as a service component uh, to their customer base um, and then use that as a way to get them to move off-prem. Uh, we also see that a lot of them have a wide range of competitors and they're, that they're using in the, um, the solution. Some of them are using Carbonite. They're actually reselling the Carbonite solution or the Datto solution, um, as well as doing some of the, me, uh, the middle uh, areas, such as with Barracuda, or they're acting like a Veeam Cloud Connect partner from that standpoint. Key vulnerabilities from our standpoint is, again, it's a single platform. Um, there's no suite of services. Um, they don't have, they're buying technology from somebody. They're not a core technology provider, which puts um, NEC and um, our channel partners at a cost advantage. 
And last but not least is that um, architecture and the security and the insider threat in some of these scenarios here. We're ensuring that we're following the right policies and procedures to keep the data secure, to have very well documented service level agreements and make sure that the data is being protected from that standpoint. Now let's look at some of the NEC differentiators. What we like to do is to stay focused on that managed service um, with NEC storage and skilled support. Those three are kind of our solid three legs in the stool that deliver the, dip, um, the differentiation. And you can see here when you drive on the description of the NEC company being um, you know, now over 120 years old, um, founded on communication basis and computers from that standpoint, um, you're going to have a, you're going to immediately separate yourself from all of the competitors, the vast majority of them, which are under five years old and are startups. Um, a suite of services. Another key differentiator for us is the um, deduplication that you're only paying for what is stored after deduplication. Um, the leading industry software, uh, the publicly disclosed data centers, um, the addition of um, a, a legal search and archive compliance capabilities, um, as well as the self-service portal and the recovery capabilities with various RPO recovery point and recovery time object objectives. So stay focused on those key differentiators and supporting it. And um, if you're asked, uh, we also have the backup recover battle card, um, which is all about what and how to pitch the solution. Right, so the top five selling points is always what you want to lead with, which is the increased productivity and the compliance, easy to use with the portal, lower total cost of ownership when you look at the reduction um, of deduplication, the financially backed service agreements, um, the best effort uh, disaster recovery option, um, and the way that we put the solution together, uh, as well as the security, reliability, and support. And last but not least, the business continuity. So remember to go for with those five pieces um, when you're leading. Uh, increased productivity, ease of use, lower total cost, security, reliability, and support. And then last but not least, the business continuity. The second thing is to know how to approach the customers. Remember in the last session, we talked about the three, two, one rule, um, which talks about the one being the one copy of the data offsite and secure. That's your lead-in. Make sure that you're talking about that to the customers and asking them if they're following that best practice. Also, if they're having that second copy that's offline and in the existing on-premise location. Uh, NEC plays on both of those levels. The on-premise location for the short-term storage and the long-term location for the off-site storage. Um, also, the compliance in the reporting and the proactive action and support that we're taking to be able to ensure that Customers are constantly up. We're reminding them of the issue. And then the high ground positioning that I just talked about for the appliance only vendors, the general storage and the consumer grade service, not um, when I say consumer grade, a lot of those applications like the Carbonite are really focused at the, at the consumer, not at the enterprise. And you can get the uh, battle card um, on the uh, NEC anytime portal under sales tools. Okay, and now let's take a couple of minutes and just quickly recap um, some of the competitive against firms like Barracuda, uh, Datto, and um, also Carbonite. So uh, a couple of key things to, um, to point out in that when you have completeness, um, it's very important to make sure that you're able to back up things like an array, a file server array that's sitting in the environment. You're not backing up to the appliance, you're backing up from the file server array. Uh, that's one of the key things that with the NEC offering, we're able to be complete and we can back up everything, including the array. It's a shortcoming on the Barracuda solution. Also, we're able to back up the application level so that you're not having to go ahead and then do things like copy files manually and then do the backup, which is what's required in the Barracuda solution. We provide the agents for everything so you can be, you can be assured that the database backed up correctly and it was picked up and copied offsite. Another key thing. Um, also another key differentiator for us on this is the ability to go um, outside of the environment and back up other cloud environments. Barracuda Solution does not do that. It doesn't offer, especially in a hybrid cloud environment, 
may be good for the on-prem for some of the pieces with rapid restore, but it doesn't give you a full 360 degree view of backing up the entire environment. So high upfront cost, it's not a managed service. Um, and another key thing is if you wanna do disaster recovery, the channel's gotta do that. They're responsible for putting that together. It's not part of the offering on the Barracuda solution. The next one was on Datto. Datto's um, got some limitations uh, in terms of the same backup array um, and uh, the ability to go to different locations, um, to back up to different locations, uh, where in the NEC solution, we can do that. Um, also limitations in regard to the application level backups, um, as well as live sync. You can't do live sync, so you can't get into those higher level disaster recovery um, capabilities where you're running almost concurrently if the customer needs that from that standpoint. Typically hospitals, financial service companies, and even some manufacturing customers, they want that because they don't want to take the chance of going down and then having a production line or something stop. Um, and then as uh, also similar to um, a Barracuda, not being able to protect a hybrid cloud environment, only being able to protect basically what's on-prem and the files of Office 365 only. And then last but not least is on the Carbonate, really focused at the clients um, and very small organizations. There's really very low server capability uh, with a lot of limitations that are associated with that. Lower encryption key, key um, so the more vulnerable and the slower keys. Uh, again, not offering any of the uh, um, storage array backup for the entire environment, um, the limitations associated with the application layer, uh, as well as hybrid cloud. Um, so very much so positioned at a lower level and not a full base platform. Uh, keep the high ground, stay focused on what NEC um, does from the company standpoint, the completeness of it, and the ability for us with the white glove and the suite of services that NEC offers that'll help you in selling the NEC backup and recover in a competitive environment. Rebecca, that wraps it up. Um, if there's any questions, I'd like for you to get, um, as Rebecca had shown earlier, to send those to the Optus team and uh, NEC and Optus will work uh, collaboratively with you uh, to help you formulate a competitive sales strategy. Thank you.